Death in Venice is Britain's last opera. Not consciously his last, but it, there is a, a very valedictory feeling about it. And I think it's certainly the case that it, he saw it as the last major role for Peter Pears. Uh, the central character from Thomas Mann's Death in Venice is the character of the writer Aschenbach. And it's a huge role. Uh, the protagonist is on stage virtually throughout. And it's an extraordinary thing f to have written for Pears who was 63 at the time of the first performance. For this opera, Britain almost changed the habits of a lifetime. Normally he would sketch straight into his short score. With Death in Venice, he had a sketchbook which he first took with him to Venice in 1971 as he was planning it with Van Wee Piper. It's an extraordinary document because it's a blueprint for the opera, which clearly he worked on as he worked his way through it. It's not a, a sketch that he sat down and, and worked on. It seems as if almost every day that he came to the opera, he would actually do a brief sketch in advance of it and then uh, compose in his normal manner. But it's for no other work did Britain have anything like this amount of sketches. It's 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 about thirty or forty pages. The subject of Thomas Mann's novella is a creative writer who is running out of steam uh, and to try to recapture his inspiration he goes to Venice where he becomes obsessed with the young boy Taggio who he sees playing on the beach and this is leads to his destruction it's why it's called Death in Venice. <laughs> the libretto was written by Mivanui Piper who had worked with Britain since the turn of the screw in the 50s and she found it quite a difficult assignment because Mann is a very wordy writer and of course the libretto has to be extraordinarily simplified in order to make it work in terms of opera. Britain's language in the piece is often very spare. I worked on the vocal score of the opera in the early 70s. It's here, this huge pile of paper. Uh, and I found it, I was quite disconcerted to begin with because it looked very spare and I couldn't see quite how it was going to be coloured. When I started hearing it in orchestral terms, uh, it, had this, it has this unique transparency about it, something that's like almost no other of Britain's music. It's, it's, it has been described as almost music that you see through gauze. It has a, has a wonderful soft colour about it.